All right, part one was so much fun, but this is lab part two, model data in Power BI desktop. And I fired up the lab and it launched in a couple of minutes. And I'll try this thing of fitting the window to the machine. I don't know if it'll be useful to me or not. I'll click on download lab files to the D drive. This will copy the latest lab files from GitHub and configure the directories as needed for the remainder of the lab exercises. You will see a success message above once the process is complete. Once you have received the success message, proceed, click next to proceed to the lab. And we have success, so we'll click next to proceed to the lab, which is model data in Power BI desktop part two. The estimated time to complete the lab is 45 minutes. In this lab, you'll create a many-to-many -many relationship between salesperson table and the sales table. In this table, you will learn how to configure many-to-many -many relationships. Lab story. This lab is one of many in a series of labs that was designed as a complete story from data preparation to publication as reports and dashboards. You can complete the labs in any order. However, if you intend to work through multiple labs, for the first 10 labs, we suggest that you do them in the following order. And we're on model data in Power BI Desktop Part 2. Exercise 1, create a many-to-many -many relationship. In this exercise, you will create a many-to-many -many relationship between the salesperson table and the sales table. Task 1, as always, is get started. In this task, you will set up the environment for the lab. Important, if you're continuing on from the previous lab and you completed that lab successfully, do not complete this task. Instead, continue from the next task. To open the Power BI desktop on the taskbar, click the Microsoft Power BI desktop shortcut. Open the starter Power BI desktop file. Click the file ribbon to open the backstage view. Click open report, browse reports. Go to D, DA100, labs, 04, can, oops, not correct. 04, configure, data model in Power BI desktop advanced and starter folder and click on sales analysis file and click open. All right, we'll choose file and save as. Air pending changes, we'll say apply later. We'll choose D, DA100, and my solution. And we'll save. Task two is create a many, I'm going to cancel that. Task two is create a many to many relationship. In this task, you will create a many-to-many -many relationship between the salesperson table and the sales table. In Power BI, BI Desktop, in Report View, which is what we are in, in the Fields pane, which is here, and I can't really see it very well. Ooh, let's close that. How am I going to get over? I can try this. Maybe I'll close visualizations and expand fields. No, that's filters. Fields. All right, I'll expand fields. In the fields pane, check following two fields to create a table visual. Salesperson, salesperson.
and sales sales. All right, can I make that bigger so it's easier to see? That made it bigger, but not easier to see. If I go to view and page view, actual size. Okay, let's try that. And if I wanted to make it smaller with that, yeah, that works. Or no, it doesn't, but anyhow, that seems good. All right. The labs use a shorthand notation to reference a field. It will look like salesperson pipe salesperson. In this example, salesperson is the table name and salesperson is the field name. All right. The table displays sales made by each salesperson. However, there's another relationship between salespeople and sales. Some salespeople belong to one, two, or possibly more sales regions. In addition, sales regions can have multiple salespeople assigned to them. From a performance management perspective, a salesperson's sales based on their assigned territories need to be analyzed and compared with sales targets. You'll create relationships to support this analysis in the next exercise. Notice that Michael Blythe has sold nine, almost nine million. Here is Michael. Michael Blythe, almost nine million. Switch to model view, which looks like that. Drag the salesperson region table to position it between the region and salesperson. Oh, this again, how fun. All right. Now I'll have to find those tables. And I have to, what if I go down, make that smaller. All right, salesperson region is this. We'll put it between region and salesperson. All right, what if we go there? Okay, we can make that a little bigger. Yes. All right, we have dragged the salesperson region table and we have positioned it between the region and the salesperson tables. Use the drag and drop technique to create the following two model relationships. Salesperson employee key to salesperson region employee key. All right, and that's salesperson is one, there's an arrow and the star means many relationship to the salesperson region table. All right, and the region salesperson territory key goes to sales territory key in salesperson region. No, it's, it's a one to many relationship where there's one sales territory key is unique in region and there can be multiple sales territory keys in salesperson region. All right, the salesperson region table can be considered to be a bridging table. Switch to the report view, easy for you to see. All right, go there and there. Ooh, what have I done? I thought I was going back to report view, but apparently not. Let's try again. Okay, I'm gonna say mix out of that. All right, we made it back to report view. All right, then notice that the visual has not updated. The sales result from Michael Blythe has not changed. Switch back to the model view. And then follow the relationship filter directions arrowhead from the salesperson table. Okay. Salesperson goes to sales and salesperson goes to salesperson region. It also filters the salesperson, the salesperson table also filters the salesperson. Okay. Consider that the salesperson table filters the sales table. It also filters the salesperson region table, but it does not continue by propagating filters to the region table. The arrowhead is pointing in the wrong direction. To edit the relationship between region 
and salesperson region, double click the relationship region and salesperson region. In the edit relationship window in the cross filter direction, select both. Now I'm gonna to have to choose okay. All right, check apply security filter in both directions, check box and then click okay. Thank goodness I can click okay. Notice that the relationship has a double arrowhead. All right, and it does. Switch to the report view. And notice that the sales values still have not changed. The issue now relates to the fact that there are two possible filter propagation paths between the salesperson and sales tables. This ambiguity is internally resolved based on a least number of tables assessment. To be clear, you shouldn't design models with this type of ambiguity. The issue will be addressed in part later in this lab. And by the complete completion of the Create DAX calculations in Power BI Desktop Part 1 lab, switch to the model view. In the Edit Relationship window, uncheck the Make This Relationship active. What? Okay, okay, I skipped. All right, 15 to force filter propagation via the bridging table. Edit, double click the relationship table between salesperson and sales table. Salesperson and sales, double click. Bring up the edit relationship window. We'll uncheck make relationship active and then click okay. Huh. The filter propagation will now follow only the active path. In the diagram, notice that the active relationship, the inactive relationship is represented by a dashed line. Switch to report view. Uh -huh. Notice that the sales for Michael Blythe is now nearly 22 million. Notice also that the sales for each salesperson, if added, would exceed the table total. It's a common observation of a many-to-many -many relationship due to the double, triple, et cetera, accounting of regional sales results. Consider Brian Welker, the second salesperson listed. His sales amount equals the total sales amount. It's the correct result simply due to the fact that he's the director of sales. His sales are measured by the sales of all regions. While the many-to-many -many relationship is now working, it is now not possible to analyze sales made by a salesperson because the relationship is inactive. You'll be able to reactivate the relationship when you introduce a calculated table that will allow analyzing sales made in the sales regions assigned to the person for performance analysis in the Create DAX calculations in Power BI Desktop Part 1 lab. Switch to the modeling view. And then in diagram, select the salesperson table. In the properties pane, what? Oh, properties pane. In the properties pane, replace the text with salesperson. In the name box, replace the text with salesperson performance. The renamed table. Oh, what happened? Hmm. I'm going to apply changes because it doesn't seem to be letting me proceed without that. So I hope that was an okay choice. 
performance. Working on it, all right. The renamed table now reflects its purpose. It is used to report and analyze the performance of salespeople based on the sales of their assigned sales regions. Okay. Task, that's the end of task two. Hopefully I did that all right. Now it is, we're on to task three, relate the targets table. I bet that is off screen here. Oop, here it is. Okay. Create a relationship from salesperson performance, employee ID column, and targets employee ID column. Okay. In report view, in report view, add the targets target field table to the visual. All right, I'm gonna expand that. Okay. It's now possible to visualize sales and targets, but take care for two reasons. First, there's no filter on a time period. So, and so targets also include future sales target amounts. Second, targets are not additive and so the total should not be displayed. They can either be disabled by formatting the visual or removed by using calculation logic. You'll follow the second approach by creating a target measure in the create DAX calculations in Power BI Desktop Part 2 Lab that'll return blank when more than one salesperson is filtered. That was task three, finish up. In this task, you will complete the lab. Save the Power BI desktop file. All right, can we go up? Click on save, or we can also click file and then save. If prompted to apply queries, click, click, click apply later. I've already clicked apply, so I don't know if that was a good choice or not. But if you intend to start the next lab, leave Power BI de desktop open. You'll enhance the data model with calculations using DAX in the Create DAX calculations in Power BI Desktop Part 2 lab. Congratulations, you've made it to the end of this module. To mark this lab as complete, click End. I will do that. Great. All right. Thank you.